God be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Preach the good news. Not to be the wrath of God. Not to be the, the, the ones that go out holding the banner and the rod. Jesus come to rule with a rod of iron. Not us. In that next dispensation. And, and, and I, th I think that becomes the issue. A lot the, the scriptures that have not been understood or studied to the point where we even understand most folks don't even. I think the, I mean, the majority among us don't really understand dispensation period. We've never talked about it. Exactly. Uh, many Bible studies and many uh many of the, the, the denominations that I've had the chance to fellowship Ooh. with don't do it. And uh <clears throat> they people don't really know why uh, how God was dealing with notice the changes in the way that God dealt with his creation. Yes from sir. from 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 period to period. Yes sir. And, and that's 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 bad. But that's bad. We're, we're growing. Uh, and I have to I have to throw it in the growth curve, or else why you get uh, old women discouraged. <laughs> but a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't understand that we we don't. It's one of the most bought, but least read books I think in history, ever known to mankind. The Bible is really not as difficult as we try to make it's it. It's not. He said my birth are easy and jokes are like. But nobody really wants to look at it because it, it talks too much about the personal condition of the individual and the necessity for changing. Um, and I think that's where it comes. And, and of course, the culture itself. And one of one of my friends told me, he said, "I said, well, we've been teaching that area." He said, "Yeah, but look who taught us how to, who taught us this." Yep. Uh, and the culture that we were a part of initially is a culture that was bent on it, on it, on changing its external environment. It went forward to cause what it perceived to be <laughs> ungodly to make it godly. Yes. But God came to make us godly. Exactly. For Jesus Christ came to change our internal environment that we might appear to the world to be what the kingdom is. Right. Not to go out and make the world the kingdom. Hey, you so, know. Because, and it said, the, the scripture says the kingdom of God come not by observation, but it's revealed from within. Hey, hey, you if forget. you want somebody to be righteous, you have to be righteous in front of them. Hey, Elder, you forget this one part of the scripture said, remember that in Romans? And I think it's seven. He said, "What the law could not do." Amen, man. Come on, brother. And Amen. see, what we try to do is try to bring the law into our behavior and to justify our behavior. We're trying to bring laws with. That's what I'm saying. What the law could not do. The scripture is very clear. What the law could not do, and yet we try to still use the law to justify our behavior, justify the policies that we try to create. Not understanding that not everybody wants to live by that. We have run people off, haven't we? The, the, and, and I think that is the that to make the distinction between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the world, to even include the United States of America, <laughs> these are two distinct entities that dwell in the same place. They occupy the same landmass. <laughs> the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world, which is the United States of America, as Lee would say, are diametrically opposed one to another. I think that's the right word. <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah. And, they, and they still are. I mean, when we, the kingdom's principles are perfect. They are flawless. Right. And when the kingdom principles are adhered to, even secular or worldly governments survive better. Right. So as long as the United States of America was employing uh, kingdom principles to, to the government, to, in, to the society, to its, its, its development of its, its, its government, the, on, the government was going to, it was inherently going to prosper. That's, that's, right. that's just the nature of the kingdom. Yeah. But it takes kingdom persons. It yeah. takes born again people to be able to pull it off. And you know, because I'm, I'm, human nature is inherently corrupt. Uh -huh. And having the laws that are perfect put before us, we are not going to be able to keep them. Hey, hey, Pride hey. is going to rise up. <laughs> it's, I remember one word that we knew uh, saying that I was familiar with when I was in the world system. It said, "Power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely." Absolutely, yeah. And we have seen that manifested, right? Uh, as as some people rose to positions of prominence and of influence, they became obnoxious. 
Uh-huh. And, and, and or they were already obnoxious in the position allowed them to show how messed up they really were. Right. So if that rise is is, 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 is is if you experience that acquisition of influence without that change of heart, what you're going to manifest is a more evil person than you were than you when you had more restraints on you, constraints exactly. on you, restraints. Exactly. So, and that's what we're seeing happen. <clears throat> and I and I'll even Lord help me. This is not going to be a popular thing so I'm about to say, but it's, it's true. As we saw black people gain more freedoms uh-huh. to manifest or to express themselves in the society, did we manifest ourselves more holy? I mean, if we look at our influence on the music industry, even, did we turn out, do we sing, do we produce more songs about Jesus? Do we come across with less? How did how did that play out? You know, I want to I want to I want to I want to put it in perspective of this. We we we're not a the, we're not a, a, a theocratic Doctor government. Steve. We're not. So I understand. I can understand. We say the United States of America is not theocracy, right? Right. Well, and I, well, I, I want to put it in balance what you're saying though is we're not saying that uh, uh, music industries or, or movies and stuff had to be uh, of Christian doctrine. But we were talking about the fact is that the, the advocating of wrong, evil behavior that hurts people is outside even <laughs> our, our expectations of secular world, you know? And 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 what we as as Christians are supposed to advocate that that they, they try to get at least people to get along with one another, right? To work with one another. Uh, and, and let's finish. Let's finish this scripture to, to show the point we're trying to make. Look, let's read the rest of this, Elder, uh, because I think people need to understand the behavior is big and, and critical. You have stopped at ten. Does the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Come on, brother. a fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs. So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Come on now. Now, let me see. I can see if there's another slide after that because it's, yeah, there's more to it. But then we're going to have afterward. Let's wait. Let's stop on that for a second. You, I'm going to go back to the one you just read. You said you did 11 and 12, right? Right. And and, and you got you got it? You got enough to talk about with it? Because oh, yeah. it's in line with what you were saying. Oh, yeah. I, I just want to see you. But you got enough of it? You saw it, right? I'm going to take okay. it off. So, so like you said is, does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet? water and bitter. What we're saying is in our society, our, our one objective is to get them at least bear sweet water. We're not even asking what, it, what has to be uh, Christianity, but should society bring forth sweet water? Should it, or, or, or does it bring forth bitter? Aside from Christ, you mean uh, not, not yeah. aside from Christ? Does it bring forth <laughs> sweet water? Well, and look, Elder, Elder, I want to put this in there too because I, I want to make sure that see when we're talking to people, not everybody except Christ, right? We know that, right? Not everybody has the same uh, doctrine or faith or whatever, mm-hmm. but we want to make sure we understand is that one of the things we can at least agree on, even if they want to disagree. Uh, on our our path, which is Christ, I, and that's what we want to always advocate. Our path is Christ, but we know other people are taking this broad road to destruction. And the point I'm saying is that our society, as we move forward, they at least need to understand that you can't have bitter and sweet water, meaning bad behavior and good behavior, coming out of the same fountain. You 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 can't have. Uh, what's that? I like that verse twelve. So can no fountain both yield 
salt water, and fresh water. Exactly. Yeah, I, 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 I think this, that would be a, almost a sales pitch for yeah. entrance into the kingdom. Right. Because without being born again, it's just inherent. That's going to happen. Uh, Father human nature is always going to slip, you know, dip his toe into the to the, to the pond. It's going to happen. Well, you um, we're well, going to have men that come up who are going to have righteous laws, and we've had laws on the book that were excellent laws. But we had unrighteous men. Unrighteous men. <laughs> and yet they couldn't keep them. I mean, they ended, ended up their, their own stuff. They, that's why they have penalties for breaking laws because men in their in their fallen state will not <laughs> just conform. Yeah. There has to be a, 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 a um, there has to be a, 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 a <laughs> retribution. There has to be some kind of consequence, a negative consequence to the actions to keep them from doing something negative. Hey, so, <laughs> hey, Alvin, before you go forward, what I'm saying to you, I'm with you on that. I agree with you. The point is that I want to back up on a little statement. Like I said, we do agree that we got, we got Muslims, we got atheists, we got all that in this country. But we as Christians, that's, don't call yourself people listening to the video don't call yourself Christian if you're bearing salt and sweet water because that's not going to work, right? It, it said, the scripture said that you cannot have a fountain yielding salt water and fresh water. You cannot have, you cannot have a fountain sent forth at the same place, sweet water and bitter water. That's what we just read. I mean, just in case people didn't get it, Elder, is what you're saying is, I agree. Outside of Christ for us, you that's you you really bring it forth the expectation of death. That that's that's what's happening. But if you're professing to be a Christian, you have to strive toward the what we just read, right? Legit. Yeah, and that's why I think that's where the big confusion comes in. If we say we're a Christian nation, then the world should see sweet water come out. That's what the scripture just said. The scripture, the scripture said we shouldn't be sending out bitter fountains, right? If we say we're a Christian nation, regardless of the fact that we may have Muslims and, and, and atheists and anybody else, we're saying is that as a nation, as an individual, you shouldn't be bringing forth bitter water. And as, that, as, as, as we speak to the household of God in the United States of America, you know, I, I think <laughs> Pastor Taylor, that in this next few months, I say months, yeah, in the next few months, we're going to have to make a distinction between the household of God and, and, and we're going to have to make a difference. We're going to have to identify the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. Yes, sir. Or in, in, in the United States of America. Yes, sir. And, and it has to be, I think, it has to be a stark contrast because it is. Yes, because yes. what I find myself doing a lot of times is holding the citizenry of the United States of America up to a standard that they are not capable of keeping because they've not been born again and have not the spirit of God in them. But yet they call themselves Christians, right? And that is the point. Yeah, that but, is the very point. But do we, we in the United States, or many of us in the United States of America, are calling ourselves Christians who have never met Christ. Right. And do we, we have call a ourselves Christians like we join a social club or something? Right. And do we have a blueprint? Yeah, we join a group. And, 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 you're a Christian. Yeah, I was born a Christian. You know, but it, it, you have to be born again a Christian. You can't be born a Christian. You have to be born again a Christian. And I think that that the, the, the what has to the distinction, it would be helpful to a lot of people because a lot of people think that they are Christians solely because they were born in a country where they said that it's a Christian nation. Right. I think, and I can't remember the exact time the statement, but Mr. Obama, President Obama, I think stated in, in one of his speeches, and I might be wrong on this, so, uh, uh, that the United States of America was a post-Christian nation. And I think that in his comment, 
and I'm just, I may totally be misinterpreting this, but he was saying that religious wise, religion wise, this was at one point, quote unquote, that Christianity was the predominant religion in the country. But that he does not say that it's not that it's not not that way anymore. The balance is a little bit different. Well, let's, but let's, even at that time, we were not portraying ourselves to be Christians. Exactly. That's the whole point. It's, and I agree with you. And that's what I want to say. That's the whole point. We were showing a form of godliness. Yeah. But denying the His truth. power to keep us living right. Exactly. <laughs> Love folks. And let me we didn't even, we were taught so rig, I mean, <clears throat> teaching was so bad, we weren't even taught that we were supposed to love our enemies. El, El, we El, were not El, taught the proper way to propagate the gospel, not El, in the United States of America. We were not taught, yet we were highlighting, you take the 60s, and for example, when they had the civil rights movement and everything, we, we see, once again, out of what you saw was, when you saw the hate, and that goes all the way back to slavery, it was taught because it was it was taught that way elder to to uh justify the exploitation of people it was taught right yeah and, and 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 what you see so when when he's talking he's saying is when i see sweet water and bitter water coming out that post-christian concept needs to go away and people need to understand we as the body of christ need to teach one another so that the world can see the light of christ is to operate on the blueprint that's given this scripture the new testament gives us a a, a blueprint elder the the scripture you read earlier let me see here let's bring it up again the one you read earlier uh Read it. I may have read it, or you read it. I'm not sure which one read it, but look at this. Look, I'm gonna bring it out, but I'm read it for the people again. Here's a blueprint. Where is that uh, share? I gotta share. Let's see, share. Read it. Read a blueprint again, Elder. Either make your tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. But the tree is known by its fruit. A generation of vipers. How can you be an evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the abundant treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Right. I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they should give an account thereof in the day of the judgment. Yes, sir. By the words, by thy words, thou shalt be justified, and by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. Yes, and look, now, I'm going <clears throat> to add this to you so you can keep talking. Watch this. We already read James about the tongue, right? Read, read this. This is the end of that chapter, starting at verse 13, James 3, 3. Uh, Who is a wise man? 13. Go ahead. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good consideration, I mean, good conversation is work with meekness and wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Come on, bro. So what you just, so what you just read, then I, you can just add to that <clears throat> keep in perspective. We have the answer. The, the Christian Bible, the Christian, the New Testament has the blueprint of what a believer is supposed to be. Okay. Not by the law, because we already recognize in the scripture the law don't work. Kill so it. what the scripture was saying is that you're supposed to bring forth good fruit. And, and we're gonna, how do we work with it? A tree is known by its fruit. 
Somebody can give you accusations. Let's say for you. But they still, they can hear a lie, but they still got to check your fruit. They can believe a lie, yep. but it's still, it's still your fruit will all override a lie. Why? Because yeah, yeah. there's no law against, the, maybe we should have put that up there, the fruit of the spirit. Right. Not, not, no, there, there's not in the, in, the, in, the, in the kingdom of God, there's no law against that. And, and, and in the world system, again, that's the one thing I, I, I have to, I want to be able to communicate more effectively is that the principles of the kingdom are flawless. And yeah. when you can't adhere to them, then it all goes well. I mean, everything's perfect. We, we would have heaven on earth if we could if adhere we to the principles of the kingdom. Exactly. The issue becomes that because we are in a fallen state, we find ourselves not doing it, and, and, and the societies that we're a part of don't benefit from all this righteousness that God has put in the midst of us. But the body of Christ, and, and I'm trying to kind of capsulize everything that we're, we're kind of talking about right now. We know that the evangelical part, the evangelicals were in had conversation with the president. How they affected his behavior, we're not sure about, but it doesn't appear to have affected them in a positive manner. Exactly. So what were they actually trying to minister to him? What were they communicating to him? And then it's been too much time defending <laughs> or yes. knowing his behavior. You see his defending behavior, yeah, was not was, and that has been done in the past. I mean, we, we the the body of Christ has, and I'm going to include. I have to include now. I know it's not always. It's not, but we re, they're representative of who we are on a larger scale. Right. At some point, judgment will begin in the household of God, and I think that's going to begin with the, with the conversation like these, uh, addressing the issues. It says judgment begins in the household of God, so now we got to be made right as a body of believers that we might have an effective testimony to the world system. Come on, brother. That's From this side of the house, I'm saying, I looked at your behavior, and I looked at the things that you were doing. It doesn't line up with the scripture. Exactly. It doesn't line up with scripture. Exactly. And you seem to be condoning behaviors on the part of people who are in the secular environment or in the world system and saying that that's all right. And how does that line up with, how do you justify, how do you judge that they're being righteous when it doesn't line up with anything that? And, and, and I think, I think on that one too, we got to make sure I'm putting it by out of perspective. That object, well, see, we're not, remember Christ came not to condemn the world, right? Right. So what, what we need to be cautious of, the difference between what the uh, uh, the world is doing and what we're doing with our, ourselves. Exactly. See, I can't, take, I can't take a secular action, movie, whatever, and judge it on Christian's behavior. Okay, so let me, so there, and that, that becomes me, not a sticking point, but it's the point of, I understand, I'm trying to understand did they do the right thing in their in their behavior toward uh, the president? Well, were they supposed to address his behavior, or were they supposed to just pray for him? Well, let, 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 okay, now now we back. So I'm, I wanted to separate the two. I said we're not going to. We, our job is not to 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 condemn the world, right? We're in the world, but we're not of the world. You with me? Right. So we're not endorsing and saying what the world does is right. We're not saying that. And you're not saying that. That's not what you're saying. You got to make sure the difference. But when we come, like you said, house, the, the judgment begins in the house. That's when we sit there and say, you need to bear fruit. And if you're not bearing fruit, we ain't talking about the law, but fruit. That's when we're supposed to be able to say, what? part of what you just do, did or just said or what behavior that you're doing lines up with the fruit of the spirit. Where's your self-control? Where's your gentleness? Where's your meekness? Where's your patience? Where's your joy? Where's your love? Where's your faithfulness, right? I'm saying is that we gotta, you can't judge, I can't you cannot judge the world. And I'm talking about somebody that's doing the, the, the twerping, right? Are you with me? Mm -hmm. I can't, I'm not, we're not advocating, we're not, we're not condoning, we're not endorsing the world's behavior. 
But we do have responsibility, especially when you say being a spiritual advisor, right? To somebody, <laughs> right? As, as, as a minister of the gospel, right? Mm -hmm. That's where you sit there and you, we can confront one another in love. <clears throat> say, how is this behavior lining up with Christ? You see the difference? Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. See, I think sometimes people say we condone this. Son. No, no, no. But I was talking about the world. It, it's not supposed to bring forth good fruit, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're going to be an advisor to somebody that said they are a Christian, correct? Mm -hmm. And we're talking about really not just one person. I'm really talking about the whole body of Christ. If you if you put anger and bitterness in your mouth, coming out of your mouth, toward another person, whether they say, look, Elder, whether they save or unsaved, if you bring in bitterness and envy and strife toward somebody as a body of Christ, then you're not bearing right fruit. Correct. That's the difference. And, and, and here's a good example. I got a scripture for you. Because <laughs> you know, the word speaks for itself, right? That whatever we do on this, this video and any other ministry out there, it's, it's the word that God confirms, isn't it? It's not us. It's not what we say, not what our opinions are. It's what the word says, right? Amen. That, that I just want to make sure you remember that. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is only responsible for confirming the word. Amen? Amen. So, so here's an example I'm going to show you of Christ. And as you think about this scripture, as you read it, or this passage, as you read it, there's, there's, there's two group of people here. And one of the people could be somebody what you call worldly. Are we, are you tracking with me? Worldly, <laughs> right? All right. So, so look how Christ dealt with that. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. I will show it to you. And, 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 and I think with a spiritual advisor, this is what they're supposed to track the way Christ did it. Who would read that for us for people listening? And one of the Pharisees desired him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's go in the scriptures where they can, if they want to look it up. We're doing Luke 7, 36. And we're reading uh, all the way to, let me see how far I'm reading now, Elder. One second, please. We're reading from... From Luke 7, 36 to 50, Elder. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he should eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, <laughs> when she knew that Jesus said it meet with the Pharisee's house, in the Pharisee's <laughs> house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. Okay, uh-huh. <laughs> and stood at his feet behind him weeping. Uh-huh. <laughs> and began to wash his feet with tears. Okay. And then wiped them with the hair of his head. Uh-huh. And kissed his feet. <laughs>